So today, I'm going to share with you the very important differences between full truckload freight, partial truckloads, and less than truckloads that every freight broker and freight agent need to know. This is a very important training. Here's why. I get this question all the time. And you got to understand, there are even experienced freight brokers and experienced shippers that don't know the difference between full truckload, partial truckload, and LTL. So I'm going to I'm going to share with you that today. But in order to do that, I had to put together kind of a cheat sheet here because this is very nuanced. So you can see on the screen here, there's an image that says full truckload, partial truckload, LTL. I wish this was all I had to show you to explain all the nuances between the three, but it's not. So let's start with full truckload. Now, full truckload or FTL is a shipping mode in which a single truck is loaded with a single company's freight. So that means you have one customer, one shipper loaded on that truck. Now it might be 20,000 pounds. It might be 30,000 pounds. It might be 40,000 pounds. It might be rubber. It might be bottled beverages. It might be building supplies. Okay. But ultimately um, it's one shipper that has dedicated exclusive use to that truck. All right. Beyond that full truck load is very efficient for larger shipments. Again, 20,000 pounds, maybe up to 48,000 pounds, depending upon the type of equipment you're using. All right. The next component here is that full truckload shipments have the fastest transit times. And as the truck is loaded and delivered to one location with no stops or very few stops. All right. So it picks up at one location, drives the long distance, delivers to the, to the delivery location. Occasionally you will have some stops, but it's very few and far in between. Okay. All right, so however, full truckload is also the most expensive out of the three, all right? So it only makes sense if you're, the truck is really filled up, meaning if you're filling out that truck with, from a weight or from a dimensions perspective, that's the only time full truckload really makes sense, okay? Full truckload is, is often used by larger companies that frequently ship large amounts of cargo. So when you have shippers that sell large volumes to their customers, as opposed to one pallet here and one pallet there, they're selling large volumes. That's the type of shipper that is heavily dedicated to full truckload. All right. And then full truckload shipments are not subject to the same handling as LTL shipments, which can reduce the risk of claim. So in most cases, full truckload shipments have the lowest freight claim ratio as compared to partial truckloads and especially LTL. And I'll explain more about that when we talk about LTL, okay? And then full truckload is a good option for businesses that need to ship time sensitive or fragile cargo. So full truckload is the fastest form of the, you know, truck transportation comparing full truckload, partial and, and uh, LTL. And it's also because of the fact that it's only one customer on that truck and we're not mixing freight from multiple customers or multiple different types of freight. It lends well to fragile cargo because if you can't mix that or it's different dimensions, there's a lot of reasons for that. But that is the basic outline and fundamentals between full truckload freight. All right. So now let's talk about partial partial freight. All right. So partial truckload freight, uh, shipping is a shipping mode that falls between full truckload and LTL. It's kind of a hybrid, right? Like LTL partial truckloads include multiple shipments from different businesses. So when you send a partial truckload, it is going to be mixed on a, in a trailer with multiple other shippers, multiple other businesses. Okay. Very similar to LTL. Now, Partial truckload shipments are typically between six and 20 pallets, and that can vary from carrier to carrier, and weigh between eight and say 20,000 pounds with a minimum of 12 linear feet and maybe up to a maximum of about 30 feet, okay? So it's kind of in the middle. I'm gonna share with you the LTL piece, but it's kind of that middle ground that's a specific weight in a specific dimension, okay? Now, partial Shipments do not require a freight class to secure the rate, which can save businesses money. I'm going to explain what freight classes are when we talk about LTL, but it does not require a freight class, all right, which can definitely save some money. Uh, partial shipments involve less handling than LTL shipments, 
which can reduce the risk of damage or loss. Again, there's not as much handling, there's not as inner lining, there's not as much on and off of the truck, load, unload, and shifting and moving of the freight, which is typically where damage is caused in LTL freight, okay? Partial truckload shipments have faster transit times than LTL shipments. And they do not make, uh, need to make as many, because they don't have to make as many stops, right? Typically, they don't have to make as many stops, so they are typically faster than LTL shipments, all right? However, partial truckload is not as common as full truckload or LTL shipments. It only makes sense or the shipment falls within a specific size and window that I shared with you before. Partial truckloads is a good option for businesses that need to ship larger shipments that are not quite a full truckload. So if you've got a half a truck, right, or you've got some LTL that weighs 20,000 pounds, you know, that's when you might want to consider shopping that as a partial, right? And that's where you as a broker can save money for your shippers by rather than moving that as an LTL shipment, then they can move it as a partial shipment. And that's typically going to offer them some savings and advantages, all right? And then partial truckloads can be cost-effective option. It can save you you know, businesses money on freight class charges and handling fees, like I just shared with you. Now, um, I'm going to move on to LTL. But if you guys are curious about downloading the cheat sheet, there's the link right there. You just go to freightburgerbootcamp.com forward slash LTL, and you'll be able to download the cheat sheet at the end of this training. Okay. All right. So now let's talk about LTL. This is the one that's most mysterious and misunderstood by most brokers. All right. And that is less than truckload, also known as LTL. LTL shipping is a shipping mode in which a single truck is loaded with freight from several different businesses. You might have 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 different shippers on an LTL in, that are loaded into an LTL carrier's truck. All right, so you got a lot of different businesses, a lot of different types of freight. LTL is a cost-effective option for businesses that need to ship smaller shipments say from 150 pounds up to 15,000 pounds. Now the heavier, heavier you go with LTL, sometimes it becomes makes more sense to go partial. Anything below 150 pounds typically goes on a, on a parcel carrier like a UPS or a FedEx, right? So you'll send that as a, as a package, as a parcel package, right? Not as an LTL shipment. So those are the basic dimensions where it can be cost effective. LTL shipments usually take up one to 10 pallet spaces, but less than 12 linear feet. So if you look at that, you can see there's a window there where, where LTL becomes very competitive. And then when it starts to fall outside of that window, then it becomes more of a partial truckload or a full truckload from a cost effectiveness. Now, LTL shipments are subject to more handling than full truckload shipments, which can increase the risk of damage. Now, let me explain to you what I mean by that. So LTL carriers use what's called a hub and spoke model. So what they do is they will load the freight up at your location. They'll pick up all that local freight in that location. Say it's in the Buffalo market. They'll go out and pick up a bunch of freight from shippers in the Buffalo market. Then they'll bring it back to a warehouse and they'll offload it. And then they'll move that onto another truck that will take it from Buffalo to Chicago, another terminal. And then they may offload it there and load it to another truck and so on and so forth. So it's called interlining where they are using a hub and spoke model where it's not the same truck that picks it up as the truck that delivers it, right? So, you know, that's the biggest difference and the reason why it has an increased risk of damage claims, all right? Now, LTL shipments have slower transit times than full truck load and partials as the truck may make multiple stops before reaching its destination. So like I said to you, there's a lot of hub and spoke grease that needs to be moved throughout that supply chain and throughout that transit in order to make it work. So you could have multiple, by the time your LTL shipment picks up and delivers, it might go on two or three different trucks or more before it hits your location. All right. Now, LTL shipments are typically priced based on freight class, weight, and dimension of the item being shipped. This is where it gets very complicated and I'm not gonna be able to get into a lot of nuances, but what I want you to understand is this. LTL shipments are very different than partial truckloads and full truckloads because LTL takes into consideration what they call the freight class. Now the freight class is a standardized measure of how, of every type of freight and they, they will give it a numerical class. The classes range from class 50 
up to class 500. Now, I gave you an example here. And what I want you to understand is it really is a way to define the density of your freight. So for example, a think about this. If I had a pound of feathers in one hand and a pound of lead in the other, which one is going to be a bigger package, right? So a pound of lead, lead would probably fit right in my hand, but a pound of feathers might be a big box, right? So it's really trying to understand the density that that freight has, right? And, and all freight has a different density, right? And has a different class. So the thing about LTL and that I want to share with you about LTL is due to the complexity, I don't recommend that new brokers get involved with L true LTL shipments. Here's why. One, the complexity. And two, while the profit margin percentage is sometimes higher, you might be like 20 or 30 or percent or more on an LTL shipment, the values are much lower. So you might have a 200, 300, 400, $500 load for LTL. And even if you're making a higher percentage, right? It takes just as much work, just as much energy, and you're making less total dollars of profit than you could on a full truckload, which is not nearly as complex and difficult to understand and manage as an LTL shipment for most new brokers. Now, there are brokers that do very, very well in LTL, okay? And I want you to understand that it, they do. There are brokers that can do very well in LTL. But the thing is, is this, for new brokers, I don't recommend it. I don't recommend that be your starting point. I don't recommend partial truckloads as your starting point, although it's much better than LTL for you to understand because it's not nearly as complex. In most cases, I recommend new brokers, start with full truckload. And then after you get your legs under you, after you understand how to move a full truckload and you start generating positive cash flow, you're more than welcome to dive into partial truckloads or LTL. I can tell you right now, one of the most underserved markets, in my opinion, for freight brokers and for freight and transportation in general in the United States is partial truckloads right? So once you understand the nuances of partial truckloads, you understand how to price partial truckloads, and you understand where to find partial truckloads, what types of shippers, and how to support them, and you build a network of carriers and, and lanes that you're going to do that in, it can be very profitable, as can any of the three different modes, full truckload, partial, and LTL. I can tell you right now, there are brokers that are making millions of dollars in each one of those modes, and so can you, but it takes time, right? So I think that um, this should give you a good understanding of the partial truckloads, full truckload versus LTL. And here's what I want you to do. If you guys want to get the free download where you guys can get access to everything I went over in this, in this program, in this training, just go to freightbrokerbootcamp.com forward slash LTL. Again, you can download the cheat sheet at freightbrokerbootcamp.com forward slash LTL. Uh, and I think you guys will enjoy that. It will save a lot of time and energy and taking down all these notes and rewatching this 10 times. But listen, I appreciate you being here. If you guys are curious about becoming a freight broker or a freight agent and you need some help and you're trying to connect the dots, right? Check out freightbrokerbootcamp.com. Trained over 10,000 students, been in business over a decade. And I've personally done over $200 million as a freight broker. Plus we offer a 60 day, 100% unconditional money back guarantee. Nobody else in the industry does that. So check it out at freightbrokerbootcamp.com.